Hello friends and welcome back to my homestead. Today I've decided to harvest some of my beets, my red beets, so I can uh, store them away for the winter months. Now this is my summer garden, meaning that these are my summer beets. And these greens I'm going to cut off and I'm going to cook them for dinner tonight. But these guys, the root vegetable itself, I'm going to process in a pressure canner and I'm going to store them away for the winter. Now, what do I mean by summer garden? Summer garden means that I sowed the seed early, early spring and now in early August for growing zone 6A, I'm harvesting them. But these guys are not going to be able to be stored away in a root cellar. The root cellar is best to harvest those beets late in the fall, meaning that if I sow my seeds right now, today, I may be able to harvest some beets later this season, say late October, and those beets will be able to be stored away in a cold environment such as root cellar. But I don't have a root cellar, friends. I'm a little jealous for those who do have root cellars. So enjoy your root cellars. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wash them. My first wash will be here outside and then two more washes in the house and a sink. And then I'm going to show you how I like to store away my beets for the winter months. Because you guys know my motto, when in abundance today, store away for tomorrow. Look at them. Look how beautiful they are, huh? Gorgeous. They're not very big. Perfect, perfect for canning right now. So now I'm going to wash it twice more. I washed the majority of the stuff off outside, the major dirt and everything. And now I'm washing it again in a sink. So, um, so basically it will be triple washed. So I've decided that I'm not going to cut off the tops and I'm not going to cut off the root. Why? Because when I am boiling them, uh, I don't want to lose anything in the boiling water. Okay? So all I'm doing right now, I'm just washing the best I can. If you like, you can always take like a brush or something and wash it uh, with uh, bristles, the brush, to remove as much as possible. But I'm just going to wash it with my hands just like this. Okay, after washing them, I'm going to put them in a pot and I'm going to boil them. How long am I going to boil them? Until they are um, fork soft. So not overcooked, but soft. But here I have a dilemma. I have some much smaller and I have much bigger. Um, so this is going to cook much longer. So I really should separate them by size. Otherwise, one is going to be overcooked and the other one is going to be undercooked. But here's another story. It's not important that they completely, completely cooked as long as they are fork soft. Okay. So again, I may have to separate them. So I'm going to put them in a pot right now. I'm going to cover them with water and I'm going to put them to cook. Probably uh, it's going to take at least 25, 30 minutes. I'm going to set the timer for about half an hour, 25 minutes, maybe half an hour until it becomes fork soft, uh, not overcooked, just soft. Okay, friends. So this has been boiling on low for about 24 minutes now, and I'm just going to take a fork and I'm going to stab it with a fork and see how it is. So guess what? It goes in. So it's not super falling apart, but it is fork soft so it has been 24 minutes and i'm going to turn off the heat and now i need to shock them in cold water you can make ice water bath if you want to but all i'm going to do i'm just going to put it in cold water because i don't have enough ice mm -hmm. so my my daughter found me a few ice cubes thank you for the ice so all i'm going to do i'm just going to drop them into the water bath with some ice cold water so the the cooking process will stop okay and that's going to help to um, cool them off more rapidly okay because at this point i'm going to when they cool off i'm going to take the skins off okay i'm going to take the skins off despite me not cutting the tails off or anything they still produced a lot of red water so i would recommend guys that you always wear some sort of protective gear otherwise if this splashes on you <laughs> you're gonna have a bloody red stain and you can you may scare people 
Okay, friends, so my beads have cooled off a little bit and now I put gloves on because you're gonna thank me for this, you need gloves. Unless you wanna have very, very discolored hands um, because now I'm gonna be working by removing the skins, cutting off, trimming the tops and the bottoms, okay? Because at this point, they cooled off a little bit, uh, enough for me that I can handle um, comfortably, and I'm going to peel them off. Some people use paper towel and they kind of like just um, remove the skins that way, but I am, um, I like it with a knife, why? Because sometimes I have to cut off certain portions and it just will be easier. So this, for example, I can keep it whole just like this and I'm gonna drop them in my clean jar, okay? But I wanted to show you, there was one bead I found that it looks like something was nibbling on it because I saw teeth mark. I'm like, well, I have to trim that off. Uh, <laughs> I was like, interesting, who was trying to eat my beads? All right, and all I'm doing, I'm just removing the skin. It's simple, it's quite easy to take it off, just like this, say, and it comes off in a sheet. But then there's like a little blemish here or something that's kind of thicker, I'm gonna just cut it off, okay? Now, the jars are hot because I just washed them in hot, hot water, but I am not sterilizing them. Why? Because this is going to be pressure canning process. All right, so this one was a little bit bigger, so I'm going to cut it in half. And I'm putting them into my uh, core jars, and I prefer wide mouth, but you guys can use whatever you like. So this one is coming off much, much easier. Look at that, like in sheets, literally. Because this must be the one that I just pulled out of the garden this yesterday morning. All right, so again, I'm just gonna cut this, but this is kind of large, so I'm gonna cut it in half, and I'm dropping it in my jar. I have a pot of water boiling on a stove right now. And it's going to be important because I am going to be filling up my jars after they're filled with uh, beets. I'm going to be filling them up with boiling water, okay? And I'm going to be adding very little bit of salt. Now, salt is optional at this point, but again, I'm telling you, friends, food just tastes some, somehow better when there's a little bit of salt. Okay, so I fill them all up. And I left about an inch of headspace um, between the top and where the vegetables ended. And now I'm going to be putting in each this quart jars. I'm going to be putting one teaspoon of salt. Now, you guys can decide which kind of salt you're going to be putting. Uh, you may omit salt altogether. I am putting my pink Himalayan salt. Why? Because pink Himalayan salt has. 80 something essential minerals in the salt rather than just sodium chloride, okay? And make sure there's no iodine in it. Okay, so now I need to top everything off with hot, hot water, boiling water. So I have a tea kettle that was sitting here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour just a little bit, even though my jars were hot and the beets were hot, but they've cooled off since I've been working on them, and I don't want to, and I don't want to break the glass, my jar. So I just poured a little bit, just sort of create that hot condition. And now I'm going to be filling them up with a half an inch of head space. Okay, I'm going to fill each one of them up. I maybe it looks like I'm filling them up too high, but once I begin to debubble them and all the bubbles come up, you'll see that the level of fluid will drop down. All right, hopefully I have enough boiling water for the last one. If not, I have a pot going. Oh my goodness, this is perfect. I had just enough. All right. So I don't have a real debubbler, so what I'm doing is this is just a plastic knife. And I'm just going to run around, uh, around the side. See how the bubbles came up? And all of a sudden, the level of fluid dropped down. That's what always happens. Because there are air pockets that were left between the vegetables, okay? And they need to escape. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Okay. 
All right, and the last thing I'm going to do before I put the covers on and the lids on is that I need to run the edges of the jar with paper towel and I always moisten the paper towel um, with a little bit of white vinegar just a little bit because that's going to help to remove any kind of where's my vinegar here's my vinegar just a little bit okay it doesn't have to be a lot but enough to kind of like remove any particle that might be on the edge okay any um, beet juice see there was beet juice um, any salt that might have been on it okay so now I'm going to be putting my lids on and I the lids were sitting in hot water okay even though the um, the new regulations say that you don't no longer have to boil them and I don't boil them but I do put them in hot water because I find that being in the hot water they become a little softer and I have a better seal okay and the rings I reuse and they've been washed and also were sitting in hot boiling water I just poured boiling water over and they've been sitting probably what five minutes about five minutes so how tight do I close the the rings finger tight okay that's all it is so when I work with beets, always use like these old raggedy towels, kitchen towels, because trust me, once it drips on the towel, it may destroy your towel. Always have an apron on when you're working with beets because this will stain you. My babushka, my grandmother used to tell me stories that a long, long time ago when she was young, they didn't have makeup. Guess what they used? Beets to put rouge on their cheeks and to color their lips. So she says, before going to dance in the evening after working in the fields all day, they would they used um, coals to darken their eyebrows and to put beets on their lips. Yeah, isn't that crazy? So this is a pressure canning process because beets are low acid food. It is very important that they're being processed in the pressure canner, not water bath. If you guys are adding vinegar, kitty cat, what are you doing? If you guys are adding vinegar to your beets, then it can be uh, as pickles, pickled beets, then that can be in the water bath. However, I did not add any vinegar, just salt. Remember, salt and boiling water. So therefore, I'm going to be processing in the pressure canner. Before you guys use your pressure canner, first of all, don't be afraid. Just read the booklet. That's what I did. Okay, read the booklet find out exactly uh, what the directions are and the safety guidelines. Find out what your elevation you live at so you know how many pounds you need to apply when you're doing your pressure canning. But it's not scary. It's not scary at all. It just follow the guidelines, okay? So I have my pressure canner with two inches of hot water already and I'm gonna start putting the jars in. If it's too hot, you can always use gloves when you're handling or we have this little jar picker upper. That's what I call it. It's a very fancy word. Um, I definitely use it after when I'm, rem when I'm removing my jars. Okay. So I have six quart jars. Okay. And I have two inches of hot water. So just remember when you are putting hot jars, it has to go in a hot, hot water as well. And now I have to put a cover on. I'm operating outside because it's ridiculously hot in New England and I am on the porch so we have a propane tank going so I have all American a very very large I forget how many quarts it is but it's one of the largest all American canners and there's like a little nudge in the bottom and there's a little arrow on the top and they have to line up okay they have to line up Make sure they line up, okay? And now I'm gonna be putting on the cover and make sure that they are adjusted on each side. Come on, come on, line up, okay, line up. There it is. So on the opposite side to each other and I'm gonna tighten them, okay? Opposite each other sides. So a couple of things I wanna add is that when you're adding water to your canner, okay? 
Uh, it is always a good idea to put a splash or two of white distilled vinegar, especially if you have hard water where you live, okay? And um, some canners will tell you, so I'm just gonna double check, everything is tightened. Okay, it's already hot, okay? Some canners will tell you that you need to put oil around on the rim, okay? All right, so it's nice and tight. So now I'm gonna let this sit, come to a boil, and I'm gonna start uh, looking for the uh, steam to come out of that little port. And it's going, it needs to steam for 10 minutes. I have to see a steady steam coming for 10 minutes before I do anything else. So let's just do its thing. So I'm glad it's outside and not in my kitchen because it's so, so hot today. Okay, you probably can't see it on this because I'm outside, but it's been steam, steaming for 10 minutes and now I have to put weight. And according to my elevation, I need to put 10 pounds. So there's a little spot with 10 that I'm gonna put right on it. And now I'm going to wait until my gauge uh, reaches 10 pounds, okay? It's gonna show 10 pounds. If it starts rising up higher than 10, I have to adjust the heat, uh, turn it down a little bit to maintain 10 pounds of pressure, okay? And now for my pints, if this was pints, it would be 30 minutes of processing time and then 35 minutes for my quartz. So I'm gonna wait until it reaches 10 pounds of pressure and I'm gonna mark my timer for 35 minutes. Okay, it reached 10 pounds of pressure on the gauge. I don't know if you guys can see it. I don't know if it's, it's not focusing. And look, the weight that I put on is jiggling just like this. So I'm gonna set my timer, 35 minutes. Okay, friends, it's been exactly 35 minutes and I'm gonna turn off the heat, all right? Turn off the heat and I'm going to allow this to calm down, stop everything and cool down, okay? It is important that you don't open it right now. You don't remove the gauge or weight right now, nothing. Let this cool down allow this gauge to fall down to zero and only at that point when things cool off you can open the cover and remove the jars but at this point i'm gonna do absolutely nothing i'm gonna let it sit and do its thing okay so yeah hey kitty cat did you come to investigate Are you precious okay so it's been about 40 45 minutes or so and uh, the gauge has fallen down to a zero there's no more uh, air coming through anywhere and now I can we can open this again it's still hot inside so we have to be careful okay and I'm gonna open my latches here Because it's very hot, I have to be careful that I'm using my fancy little jar picker upper. And I'm just going to, it's still boiling. And I'm gonna put it on my tray where it would cool off, completely cool off. It seems like the water, I don't know if you guys can see it. The water turned a little pink. That means as they were boiling, some of the liquid has escaped from, um, from the jars. And that happens, it's okay. So what I'm looking for now is that as this jar is gonna start cooling off, I'm gonna start hearing popping sound, like pop, pop, and I should hear six of them. That means that's when the jars have completely sealed, okay? And tomorrow, I will wipe them down, make sure they're nice and clean, remove the rings, and I will store them on my shelf for long-term storage, shelf-stable beets.